So, uh, for the couragers who are going to speak about the subcyclo, I think it's a very interesting procedure because it's a new perspective in the glaucoma treatment. So, as you know, we can reduce pressure or to uh, decrease uh, production or to increase uh, evacuation of acute humor. Uh, and uh, usually we use cyclodestruction at end stage procedure because of uh, rate of complication. And uh, we usually use this procedure in end stage glaucoma because of side effects. As you know, um, the side effects um, are high because of uveitis and especially chronic hypotony and the high risk of, uh, of thesis and vision loss. So we use usually this laser in end stage. But it changed because uh, this laser I use now is, as you know, is diode laser. I think most of you are using this laser in this procedure because uh, it decreases the ciliary body epithelium tissue and then decreases the acute tumor production. But now, there is another one, diode laser delivery mode, to uh, avoid collateral damage. Uh, how does it work? Uh, it works on decreasing acute tumor production, as you know, because it's a selective destruction of pigmented pilori ciliary body, but with minimal coagulative necrosis and very few action of the ciliary body sideration but also it works on uh, uveoscleral outflow. And that's why in this tracing I will show you some image later. So as you know, the standard diet, it's well known. It's usually done with um, 2,000 milliwatt uh, and during two seconds. So this is a continuous wave. So with no cooling time and um, the tissue temperatures build up and there is uh, damage in adjacent tissue. And there is a relation between the laser energy delivered and the rate of complication. And as you know, it's an infrared diode laser. But now it's possible to use the substratial diode laser and then to avoid that, to use only very short and repetitive pulse. Uh, and there is a rest period, and during this rest period, the tissue cooling time, avoid to have adjacent tissue damages. And it's possible to calculate what we call the duty cycle. The duty cycle is the difference between the on here and the total period on, on plus off. And for instance, you can use a duty period of 25%, but also a little bit higher at 31.5%. Uh, and so in my department, we evaluate the efficacy, tolerability, and side effects on both procedure, the, the procedure with 25% and 31.3 uh, uh, duty cycles. So uh, we have a first group with um, um, 48 eyes, with uh, the duty cycle at 25%, with uh, all type of glaucoma, because it's a first study, so we include primary and secondary glaucoma. And the second group with uh, 26 eyes with 31.3%. Uh, and uh, what about the procedure? It's quite an easy procedure. You just use, as you know, with uh, the diode laser to do an as an asepsis and you use an eyelid speculum. And then, uh, as it could be painful, uh, I use subtenon or peribulbal black, but now I use uh, subtenon anesthesia. So uh, with this procedure, as I explained to you, um, first group at 25 and the second one at 21.3. Uh, just to show you uh, the procedure, you need just to, uh, just to mark at three millimeter posterior from the limbus, and then you use the laser as this continues. So, oh, no. Read um, the video. It should work. So this is the video of the procedure. You just need to uh, just to to put a mark at three millimeter posterior to the limbus. So the location of the treatment. 
so it's quite easy. It's a very straightforward procedure. It could be done by anybody. <laughs> so you needn't to be a surgeon to do that. <laughs> but uh, it's important to, and then to, to, to do your uh, local anesthesia. So, um, and then you use the dynamic delivery of the laser treatment here. You just need to move the probe and then to do the subcyclo laser procedure and it takes just one or two minutes. So it's quite easy to do. And then uh, we also done the UBM just in 10 patients to, and then to compare the subcyclo before and after the, the laser. And uh, what did you find? Did we find, so uh, as you know, after the treatment, it's a basic and straightforward treatment after any laser treatment with steroid drops and follow up uh, as you know with uh, uh, basic. So what did, you fi did we find? It's um, a similar age and similar type of glaucoma. What is interesting to notice is that we have a very good IOP significant change at D1 and D7. So you see the f at the first day the, there is mild inflammation that the pressure for instance is 32.8 before treatment, but at one week, 18, and it remains stable at nine months. And this is for the duty 25%. And for the, come on. And for the duty uh, 31, same story, but better IOP results you know, and very good results in terms of IOP reduction and reduction also of medication. So, uh, in summary, um, we also had uh, noticed that we have in the pre-op UBM and post-op UBM quite an action probably on the suprachoroidal fluid and outflow. Uh, what we notice also that the complication of AFU and very uh, mild inflammation with the 25% and higher inflammation with the 31.3% with uh, few retreatment and uh, one complication is the um, corneal uh, ulcer related to the treatment. So as you know, we avoid the three and nine o'clock position. So uh, it's a significant and fast IOP reduction after one week and limited complication and side effects, and very few anatomical modification. And with the very good IOP reduction, with the um, subcyclo uh, 31, but more anterior chamber inflammation. So in summary, what could we say that with new subcyclo treatment, that there is very few complication, and uh, that it's safe, no tissue damage, low rate of vision, so probably in the practice will probably change in the future and now to propose this procedure at end state procedure with uh, uh, low uh, vision. And now the efficacy is proven through clinical studies and practical experience and it's very fast and easy treatment and it's possible to repeat the procedure and now what we try to, to, to know is if, uh, for instance, the first 31 person failed, should we treat after with uh, 31 or 25 persons? But there, is, there are very few uh, inflammation and complication. That's why it's quite interesting to propose in our um, group because we are uh, seeing a lot of uh, very difficult glaucoma who had had uh, glaucoma surgery, mix, travi, and then the pressure remains high and what to do. And I think it's better to propose this type of procedure rather than tube, who are much more complication in terms of diplopia, corneal edema, etc., etc. So probably the product would change in the future, and why not to combine the subcyclo plus SLT as we combine treatment to decrease aqueous production and to increase the outflow, and then it will be a good procedure in the, in the future. Thank you, Ryan. Remain open for questions.